Greetings, welcome back to my third episode, hopefully more prepared than the previous two. Uh, by the way, congratulations on surviving the first two, so uh, we'll keep moving forward from here. Uh, this time, I've got my slides all set up, so that way this little box over here is reserved, so I'm not going to be covering stuff up. And I got a keyboard, so hopefully you're not going to hear me smashing on my keys like I was before. In my last videos, we started with software. We took all of the Arduino and AVR um, code base that exists and kind of started stripping it away and going right down to the core fundamentals of how a microcontroller works. Today, we're going to do something similar, but this time we're going to start stripping away the hardware and going to the bare bones microcontroller itself. So you probably have all seen or had the Arduino Uno uh, this kind of applies to just about everything, and I'm using the Uno um, instead of something like the Nano or Mega because it's really easy to pop that uh, microcontroller chip off. You've probably spent some time looking at the Arduino and wondering what each little piece of it does. Uh, we've got the brains behind the whole operation here highlighted in red, which is the microcontroller itself, and that's what we're going to be focusing on for the rest of this video. Uh, the rest of everything is really just to make your first experience with Arduino easier. You've got the USB port and all of the electronics that are required so that way your microcontroller can talk to your computer easily without having to do any crazy wiring. Uh, up in the left we've got some power management stuff to make sure that your board can be powered easily but also that you're not blowing stuff up if you're misconnecting a wire uh, that draws too much current or something like that. And then you've also got a few LEDs in here to make things easier to see when maybe your serial is talking or you've got your built-in LED on pin 13. But really all we care about is the microcontroller highlighted in red. So the question is if we've got this chip how do we run it? What do we need to do? We can slap it on a breadboard but how do we know if it's running? What do we need to power it? Uh, that's what I'm going to go over here. Let's start with the basics, powering this on. You really just need to give it some sort of power between like 2.7 and 5-ish volts. Uh, the website that I'm using has a coin cell battery for 3 volts, so I'm just going to use that for simplicity's sake. Uh, if we look at the data sheet in section 1, they give us the pinout. So we can see that pins 7 and 8 are power and ground. Uh, there's also pin 22, which is ground as well. So an easy example to start with is to blink an LED, so uh, why not toss an LED into this circuit? Uh, we talked about the built-in Arduino LED last time, which is pin 13, but we knew that behind the scenes it's actually called PB5. So if we look at the pinout from the data sheet, we can see where PB5 is, and that's uh, physical pin 19. My red line here is kind of covering up that a little bit. But we can just hook up a wire from there, bring it over to our LED, uh, toss some resistor in there just to make sure that we're not blowing up the LED, uh, and connect that through to ground. So is that all we need? Do we just need a uh, power and an LED? Well, uh, let's wire it up and we'll figure it out for ourselves. Okay, so to start, let's take advantage of this Arduino board before we start ripping everything apart. It's really easy to program everything. You just click on that little arrow up at the top. I'm gonna start with the Arduino Blink example. Uh, I've already got it uploaded here, but I'll do it anyway so you can see that our built-in LED is blinking. Um, I'm using the default Arduino one. There's no need to overcomplicate this quite yet using all of the ports that we did. Uh, in the last few episodes. So here we go, blinking light, let's rip it apart. First thing first is we've got our little LED blinking here. Before we start ripping stuff off though, power off. Uh, I like to use these little uh, flathead screwdrivers, they seem to work pretty well, and I just shuffle it underneath here and slowly, slowly, slowly pry it up. Just wiggle it back and forth. Uh, you gotta be very careful not to bend these pins. And there we go. All right, I didn't bend a pin too bad. Uh, I have a lot of old Arduinos if you're wondering why they have all sorts of tape down and little drawings on them. It's because I've taken them in and out of their casings many a times and some of them are missing pins or some of them are broken. This one right here is on its last leg. If I were to pull it out one more time, I'd probably snap off a pin. So all of this is gone. So now we've got this chip. If you have a breadboard, it's very convenient to just put it right here in the middle push that into place. I've got that upside down. We'll keep our, our notch here at the top. Uh, so now if you know how breadboards work, everything that is in the same row is physically connected. So that allows us to plug in pins onto this. All right, now for a power supply, I'm going to use this little mobile five volt power bank. Uh, thanks to Pokemon Go, these are extremely cheap and easy to get your hands on. 
So I'm just gonna hook this up to our power and ground rails. All right, so I want to check this out to make sure we got a high enough charge. It's been a little while since I've charged it here. We really just need anything above uh, three volts for this to work. So I'm gonna to touch my multimeter pins. That looks like we're at 5.1 volts. So that should be plenty for what we're doing here. Now that we've got our power rails energized, we can go ahead and wire up our power and ground pins, which are seven and eight respectively on the microcontroller. So we've got pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's our power source. So we'll go there to our power line and eight to our ground. Next up is the LED and a resistor. Uh, I'm not gonna go into which resistor you need to use with an LED, that's more uh, outside the scope of this tutorial. Uh, I do want this to go to pin PB5. PB5 is the fifth one up from the bottom, so one, two, three, four, five. Let's just toss this right here. And we'll take our resistor now and bring that over to ground. All right, well, we've got uh, power, we've got ground, we've got our LED and our resistor, so why isn't this working? The reason our LED is not blinking is because we have no system clock. The system clock is what allows you to step through your code and actually execute it. Uh, the way that the Arduino Uno handles it is with an onboard 16 megahertz crystal oscillator. So we need to mimic that. Uh, on the Arduino, you can see this little oval shape here on the board. That would be the clock that's on here. So in order to wire one of these up, if you have a crystal oscillator, uh, we would go to pins 9 and 10, which are called the XTAL, the XTAL pins. Um, it doesn't really matter which orientation you use. They are non-directional. If you do not have a crystal, just skip this step completely because we're going to bypass it later. I just wanted to show you what it looks like if you were to do it yourself. So normally you would just hook up the pins and technically this might work. Uh, however, it's frowned upon to do it just directly to these pins like this because the signal is not very clean. So what you do typically is you use a capacitor on each one of those lines and tie it down to ground. And that just makes sure that you have a nice smooth signal because if this is acting up, then your clock will be off and maybe your communications with another device are going to be wrong because it thinks a certain amount of time has passed, but in reality a different amount of time has passed. So everything kind of revolves around having a nice clean clock signal. Let's wire this up. So I'll jump over to the lab and grab one of these 16 megahertz crystal oscillators. Uh, also, to make sure that the signal is smooth when it oscillates, you're supposed to use a 22 picofarad capacitor. And unfortunately, I don't have any lying around that I can use with a breadboard, which is what I'm doing here. I'm taking a surface mount capacitor, soldering it to the tiny pins of just a generic pin header, and that way I can use it with my breadboard for the time being. It's far from perfect, but it'll be enough for this example. I would encourage you to not do these changes while power is on, but since I'm not worried about blowing things up, I'm going to give myself power here. And you can see that the moment that I put these onto the crystal pins, which are directly below power and ground, that I get my LED to start blinking. So this is one of those odd quirks that, yeah, it works, but that's not really how you're supposed to do it. Um, you should really have the capacitors on there to make sure you have a nice smooth signal and that it's not being interrupted or restarting on its own. So I'm going to try to take advantage of how close everything is here. I've got one set of capacitors that can jump two spaces. There we go. And then the next one, I'm going to jam it right in here. There we go. You can see how nice and professional that looks. So our code is blinking. Does that mean that we've hit our bare minimum example? Uh, not quite. There is one more thing that matters. We've got up at the top our reset pin. So this is a very special pin that if you were to pull it low or touch it to ground, it would cause the microcontroller to reset. So I can simulate that here using a wire. Go from here down to ground and you see that our LED completely stops blinking. And as soon as I remove it, our LED goes back and starts blinking. Uh, you see how it does that little three flickers as well when I remove it? That is part of the Arduino bootloader. 
uh, that causes it to restart. It's really awesome to be able to make it obvious when it restarts. So if you keep doing it over and over again, you get that restart. Even just a static electricity uh, around you is enough to get your microcontroller to accidentally restart. So I've got this empty wire here, and just by touching it to the reset pin, sometimes that's enough to make it restart. So just holding one end and touching the other end of the reset pin is sometimes enough to reset it. You saw it flicker there. It doesn't always happen. You have to do it a lot of times. I had to take this video like a million times to get it to work. So to make sure that our microcontroller is not just resetting spontaneously, maybe due to static electricity, it's important that pin one here is tied to five volts. Uh, for the simplicity of this video, I'm just gonna take this pin one here and tie it directly to our five volt power rail. Uh, we'll have to see in the future video that this is not what you want to do because in order to reprogram your microcontroller, you need to be able to flip that down to ground and then back up to five volt. But for now, that'll work fine. So there you have it. This is the bare bones circuit that you need to have a microcontroller running on its own. You've got your reset pin uh, to make sure that your controller is not restarting on itself. We've got our crystal oscillator, which is here to make sure that our brain can think. We've got power and ground to power everything, and then our LED just to make sure that stuff is running here. All right, that's where I gotta cut it off today. Uh, there's still some more things that we can do to simplify this circuit, but that's gonna have to be for a future video. Uh, the next thing that you can really do is there's a built-in oscillator, so that way you don't have to use the physical crystal oscillator and capacitors that I used. Uh, but in order to do that, you have to do something called flashing fuse bits. Uh, and when you do all of that, you might as well just flash your code directly to the microcontroller. So all of that stuff will be covered in the next video. But until then, have fun playing with your bare bones circuit, and I'll see you next time.